That's why it's called a naked truth. Do you understand that? That's exactly what happens in society. While truth takes a long time, Churchill said, when truth has no time, you want to pull up its pants, lies and mystery have taken two, two and a half rounds of the world. And that's exactly what happens. You put a wrong thing in society, it goes around very fast. That too in today's, uh, this, uh, what's called social media, with this IT, GT and things like that and computer, it goes around so fast. But the truth never travels. It doesn't go, because it's still naked and can't expose itself. So that's how society runs. All because of one thing, the wrong educational basis. Education being just aimed at making a career and not aimed at making a healthy mind. So let's make the mind healthy. You know, as I was telling in the beginning, we don't know where the mind is. We think the mind is in the brain. Lot of people even today think the mind is in the brain. As a matter of fact, when somebody has a mental disorder, what do we do? We give chemicals. Where do the chemicals go? They go to an organ, only the brain, and damage the brain. So if you take chemical drugs for a mental disease, your brain gets damaged, so you get eventually dementia, which is called Alzheimer's disease. And there's a psychiatry professor in New York, she wrote a book that we, the psychiatrists, damage the brain of patients. So she wrote a book called Dementia, a crime by a drug-induced crime by doctors. This book cost her her job. So she was dismissed as a professor of psychology in the New York University Psychiatry. But she said, okay, I don't mind. And this book gets her now enough money, millions of dollars, to survive. And she, her name is Grace Elizabeth Jackson. Just see the book. It's a beautiful book called The Mind is the Most Important Thing and the Mind is Not in the Brain. And that's where the drugs that we give for patients damage our brain. And she said dementia or depression or dementia or mental depression or what's called Alzheimer's disease is a drug-induced crime on mankind by doctors. So you should be very careful. And what does a mind disease require? Another good mind. As a psychologist, I was very happy that today's president is a psychologist and counseling psychologist because counseling psychologists can treat a lot of unhealthy minds. So I always tell people, if you have an unhealthy mind, you require another healthy mind to make you sensible. I have a granddaughter who is a PhD in uh, counseling psychology from uh, Berkeley University. And she does counseling of cancer children. And she's very happy because a lot of these cancer ch children with cancer, they, because they are not counseled, they die because of the fear of disease itself. And if you counsel them, they live long. And all that is needed is good counseling. And that's because you require a healthy mind to cater to another unhealthy mind. So we require a lot of few people properly trained in the Somaya institutions to cater to the unhealthy minds in society. So I wish you good luck. Godspeed, and thank you once again for inviting me here. And uh, I, I don't know what you will say when you go home. I had a friend of mine who is to go around lecturing all over the place, and one day he came to Bombay to lecture. And his lecture was in a hall near uh, the fort, but he didn't know where the hall was. So he got out in the morning, being a Sunday, he wanted to write a letter to his wife at home. So he wrote a letter, went out and looked around. There were children playing on the roadside. So he said, hey, where is the post office children here? So they took him. He said, come on, sir, we are free today. We'll take you to the post office. They took him to the post office. So he posted a letter on, my, on his way back because he had a good education. He said, I must do something for these children who helped me. So he wanted to buy some chocolate. So he went to the shop and tried to put his wallet. It was in the room. So he told the children, my dear children, I'm sorry, I don't have money to buy you chocolate. But today I'm giving a speech in the evening. It's 100 rupees per seat. So you would give this shit to the organizer. And then if you, she'll be allowed free. So you save 100 rupees for helping me. Children laughed. He said, he said, why are you laughing? No, sir. No, 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 I don't get angry because I'm a, I'm a very important man. I never get angry. I'm very happy. So children said, you want to know, sir? Certainly, yes. A man who did not know the way to the post office, how is he talking about the way to heaven and things like that in the evening? <laughs> so you will say, this man didn't know the way to heaven and he was talking about education. So thank you very much for doing that. And thank you very much once again for listening to me. And thank you, Rashekan Pillay, for inviting me here. And thank the Somaya institutions for hosting me.
Thank you all very, very much once again. Good night. Good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> questions are welcome. You can ask questions. But I can't guarantee that I'll give you an answer. <laughs> questions are welcome. Sardar ji, tik hai? If uh, General Singh says it's tik hai, it's tik hai. Sir, my name is Aditya Rao. Aditya Rao. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, I wanted to tell you that, I, I wanted to ask you that, I went to an uh, international school for a demo lecture, and I started trig uh, teaching trigonometry over there. The teachers, I was giving the demo in front of teachers only. There were no students. So the teacher asked me that students here are like, I want to be a lawyer. Why should I learn trigonometry? So how do I, uh, I mean... No, no, I didn't get that, I didn't get that. No, uh, actually, teacher said that students are like, I, I want to be a lawyer, not a mathematician. So why should I learn maths? Why should I learn trigonometry? So how do I face such situation? To be a good lawyer, you must know a little bit of everything. Uh, so you better learn some mathematics, some trigonometry. Otherwise, when you have a case in the court, if the mathematics is involved in it, you'll be an idiot and you'll not be able to argue. So education must be a little more broad-based. Afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Mohit Shetty. And uh, many a times we have to set our uh, timetable with respect to uh, work or prior commitments. And uh, I, have a, I used to have a habit of sleeping at uh, 10 or 11. But after uh, the student life started, it, uh, I can't sleep till 1 o'clock. The thoughts clutter my mind. And it means life is going on becoming more and more unhealthier compared to uh, previous uh, times when work was less. No, no. You think if you sleep late is unhealthy? Yes. No, no. Yes. How long? How long do you think you should sleep? Six to seven. Six to seven. Who told you that? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm seriously asking you, because we are all told that you have to have sleep for six to seven, eight hours. Do you know who started this? The sleeping pill industry. <laughs> Actually, a man. Some people sleep only for one to two hours. They are very healthy. Some people sleep for eight to nine hours, they're healthy. But those who sleep beyond seven hours, they're unhealthy because your muscles regenerate. So you don't require, you know, some, some people, I have a lot of my patients who don't even sleep. Nothing happens to them. I have a student of mine who is a, who is a very prominent neurosurgeon. He tells me, sir, I sleep for one hour every night. And he'll be operating at one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning, but he'll be sleeping for one hour and we're getting up and again operating. He's very healthy. Uh, he's quite healthy. He's about 55 and touch wood. He's very healthy. Nothing happens. So sleeping late doesn't mean anything. But you, rec you think it's okay, but you don't have to read unnecessarily too much. I still remember as a student, I have never slept beyond. I have never slept after 9 o'clock. I always sleep at 9 o'clock. And I get up at about 4 o'clock, of course, because morning is a very nice time. No galata at all at that time. You can read, you can concentrate, you can do your work. Even now I get up early and go to sleep early. I now go to sleep even earlier. See, in the good old days when light was not there, Thomas Alva Edison was not born. So we went by the sun. So our ancestors, they slept when the sun set and they woke up when the sun rose. But otherwise night was just dark. So they slept as soon as the sun slept. They slept as soon as the sun came, came down and then slept for about four hours. Then they woke up. Then they had their food in the night or other things that they, people do at night and then again slept for another four hours. So they used to sleep four, four hours. And today also you sleep, but four hours later you wake up and then again try to sleep. So if you have a four hour sleep, it's enough. So don't worry, you're very healthy. <laughs> Thank you. Shetra, correct, huh? Yes, sir, correct. Uh, sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Colonel Gopi Krishnan. Uh, I just... Uh, colonel, you are a Colonel. Yeah, I, I am a serving I colonel. I salute leader. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I am humbled. Uh, I, just, I respect uh, all army officers. Sir, thank you so much. I just jumped into this... Uh, uh, lecture. I, thought, I heard that you are giving a, a, a public lecture here. So I just came to listen to you, sir. 
and i saw the topic which is very interesting now you feel it's uh, been a waste of time no 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 no, no sir i am very convinced <laughs> i did the right thing uh, i just saw the topic the aim of education uh, wealthy career or healthy mind so is it uh, compulsorily supposed to be a choice between the two can the aim of education be both wealthy career and healthy mind no no both yes that's why i said and or but the most important thing is a healthy mind not just a wealthy career because today our education is like the british education only for wealthy career that's why where we are where we are now you see we all want to be rich you know because that's the the western education idea now supposing you are all ias officers every ias officer gets the same pay so how can you be best ias officer among them so your wife says you know look at the lady next door she is also an ias officer's wife she has a nice sarees i don't have and uh, then he says okay i'll also be corrupt so corruption comes in because the unhealthy mind Agreed. if you have a healthy mind you will never be corrupt okay. so to avoid corruption which is a, which is the bane of indian society True. we must change our education system Agreed. thank you